يا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر Dunya is the, this world and its pleasures represents a prison for the believers and paradise for the disbelievers. So if we are living and enjoying the pleasures as if this is paradise, and yet we are saying, yes, I believe in the day of judgment. What value is that saying? Allah is not going to judge us according to what we said, but what we believed. So this is something we need to reflect on very seriously. Along with each and every pillar of Islam, and Iman and faith, but especially this pillar, we need to ask ourselves, what does our lives represent? Does it represent one who believes that he or she will be accountable for their deeds, for their sins, for their acts? Or does it represent one who doesn't? It's a very simple question. Each and every one of us needs to leave here tonight asking ourselves that question. If the answer is that our lives reflect a disbelief in the Day of Judgment, then we need to turn it around. We need to take concerted steps to bring it in line with what our belief is supposed to be. Unfortunately, I would, like, I would say that for the majority of us, this is the case, that our lives do not represent our beliefs and this is one of the big or major reasons why Islam is not respected in many parts of the world where Muslims live as minorities among non-Muslims that their lives not reflecting Islam Do not encourage anyone to want to find out about it, to want to live in accordance with it. When we look at the early generation of Muslims, from the time of Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, and the generations that followed, we find that, find that they lived Islam. Those early converts converted to Islam not because of the convincing arguments of the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him. He didn't convince his wife Khadija, for example, or Ali, his cousin who he raised in his home, or Zaid, the slave who had been given to him. Those early people who converted to Islam converted because of the character that he had. The character which reflected faith, sincerity, righteousness, and goodness. And this is what Islam calls to. A character which reflects belief. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had said, الأخلاق, I was only sent to perfect for you the highest of moral character traits. So each and every one of the pillars of Islam and Iman, especially the Day of Judgment, these principles are moral principles. We understand the details, but we should live the moral principles which come from them. A person who believes in the Day of Judgment, we have so many examples where the Prophet Muhammad would say, Whoever believes in Allah on the Day of Judgment will be kind to his guests. Whoever believes in Allah on the Day of Judgment will either speak good or be silent. And so on and so forth. Talking about character, about how a person lives his or her life. Relating it back 
to belief in Allah on the Day of Judgment. Because ultimately, if we do believe that we are accountable, we will meet our deeds, then our lives will truly be righteous lives. And that's the essence of what the Day of Judgment and belief in it calls us to. I will leave the floor to you to raise whatever questions that you had and try to answer them from this point. Thank you. Regular questions, if there's time at the end, we'll address them, inshallah. First question, as I know every baby born in a Muslim family in, what's this now? My question is, let's say, if a person, non-Muslim, grows up in a place that there is not even Islam or information, he or she died without receiving Islam. Actually, this was already explained in the lecture, what happens to them. If a Muslim does not pray the five times prayer, what is the, mus uh, what is the punishment? Well, we know that the Prophet Muhammad had said the first question that the uh, Muslims will be asked about on the Day of Judgment will be the Salah, about their prayers. And if they do not have an answer for their prayers, in other words, they had abandoned their prayers, then questions will not continue. It will not be like examinations here in the university where if you get 50% in maths and you get 90% in biology, they take the average. No. If you have failed in the area of Salah, you have failed. What sins will God not forgive? Well, the major sin which God will not forgive, if a person dies in a state of worshipping other than Allah, other than God, that is the one sin which is unforgivable. Any other sin which a person uh, dies with, without having repented from it, then it is up to Allah. He may forgive them, overlook it, based on other good deeds that they have done, or they may be punished for a period of time in hell. Uh, this is part of the details of the intercession. I didn't go into it uh, for the sake of allowing enough time for you all to ask your questions. But among the forms of intercession which will take place is that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and others will be allowed to take certain people out of hell who are believers, who are being punished in hell, but Allah has decided that their punishment, uh, they have received